Welcome to the UCCU Center on the beautiful and snowy campus of Utah Valley University. The UVU women's basketball team hosts the Aggies of Utah State. That is coming up next here on UVU TV. to the UCCU Center that will host a matchup tonight between the home Utah Valley University Wolverines and the visiting team, the Aggies of Utah State. This is the season opener for the Aggies and the second for the Wolverines. Yeah, going to be an exciting game tonight. We've got two teams that are separated by a two-hour drive, in-state rivalry. It's basketball season, and this game promises to be very exciting, and it should be a great game. And there are some great players that will be featured in this game. Let's look at the Utah Valley University players of the game. Yeah, we like taking a look at key players going into it. We've got number 11, Sammy Jensen. She is a senior playing the forward position, and she is the reigning 2011-2012 Great West Conference Player of the Year. She's going to be fun to watch, a double-double machine. It's going to be exciting to see her. We've also got on the perimeter, number 33, a guard, junior Whitney Jenkins. She's going to have to play very well for the Wolverines tonight. For Utah State, you've got the WAC preseason player of the year, number four, Devin Christensen, a senior guard. Wolverines are going to have to be aware of where she is at all times. You've also got number 44, Franny Vaulua on the inside. She's going to be a tough task for the Wolverines tonight. So we've got a, a forward and a guard. Those are the matchups we're looking at in tonight's game. Let's also take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by Coach DeVita. Let's start with the visiting team, the Aggies. Yeah, the Aggies are going to have to be very aggressive on their transition defense. They're going to have to make sure that they get back in transition. The Wolverines are always going to be looking to push the ball. They've got to find the early shot when they have their own transition offense and, as we mentioned, get the ball to Devin Christensen. For the Wolverines, they're going to have to have a very balanced offensive attack. It can't just be one player. It's going to have to be a total team effort. They themselves have to have solid transition defense as the Aggies are going to look to push the ball. So looking at these keys to the game, going to be very important for, for both teams to focus on these areas if they want to win. This is the first of four in-state matchups for the Wolverines, and you'll see it next on UVU TV. salads to our irresistible burritos and with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience Costa Vida the coast is calling welcome back to the UCCU Center I'm Matt Biamonte alongside Matt Peterson where the Wolverines will take on the Aggies of Utah State in here in just a moment this is the second home game for the Wolverines their first one they lost to Boise State 80 to 63 
Yeah, I think looking back at that game from the Wolverines' perspective, they obviously it was their first game of the year. You know, tough to come out and play well. But I think a couple areas of their improvement, they need to shoot the three-point shot a little bit better. They were one for 17 during that game. Right. And as far as turnovers go, they only had 11. So that's something that they need to continue in tonight's game. So I think keeping those turnovers low, shooting a better percentage from the three, will aid them against the Aggies tonight. And that's something they did well in the exhibition games. They, When they played Adam State previous to that game, they shot the three ball well. And let's go to the national anthem. We are a couple minutes away here from tip-off, and before that, we'll go through the starting lineups of both the Aggies and the Wolverines. The Aggies will be introduced first for all of the Wolverines. All right, the Aggies will be introduced first. Starting at point guard for the Aggies is Jennifer Schlott. 5'6 from Mesa, Arizona. Starting at shooting guard for the Aggies, number four, Devin Christensen. Starting at small forward for the Aggies, number 11, Jenna Johnson. Starting also at forward for the Aggies, number 21, McKinley Williams. And finally at center, number 44, Franny Baaulu. And Devin Christensen, who we talked about in the, the pregame show, is their star player. Yeah, she's going to have a big impact. You know, as we mentioned in the pregame, she's the preseason, the WAC preseason player of the year. So, you know, obviously it doesn't mean that she's going to be, but, you know, the coaches and teams, everybody focuses on her and thinks that she's going to have a great season. Yeah, and she had a great, she had a great exhibition game, which doesn't count officially, but she did have 32 points in their exhibition game against New Mexico Highlands. Yeah, so she'll be ready to play. But she's going to have a big impact tonight. Let's go to the Wolverines starting lineup, starting at point guard number three, Sydney Gray. So also starting at guard number four, Ali Finch Cardwell. Also starting at forward. Number 25, Casey Mansfield. And she is new to the starting lineup today, replacing Jessica Baczynski and also Whitney Jenkins, number 33, and number 11, Sammy Jensen, who was the reigning Great West Conference Player of the Year last year and also started the year off with a double-double. Yeah, she's going to be, she's going to have a great impact in, in two ways, not only her scoring, but in definitely her rebounding. And she's going to be the player to watch for the Wolverines. But as going back to what we mentioned as keys to the game, you know, the Wolverines cannot make this a, a one-person game, and it, it cannot just rely on her. They're going to have to have a total team effort. Sammy's going to have to play great. She usually does. But they're going to have to have some other players uh, step up in this situation. I, th I think both teams, when we look at this game, and they're going to look to come out fast. So I think key for the Wolverines, you know, as we mentioned, get back in that transition defense. And when they get out and run, when they have an opportunity to do so, do not turn the ball over because the Aggies are going to look to take the ball get it in transition and go the other direction. So turnovers and, and have a good start to the game. 
The tip is won by the Wolverines, tipped back to Sidney Gray, and it looks like the Aggies are pressuring high. Jensen now with the ball in the left corner. Gets it into the post and stripped away by the Aggies. There's one of those turnovers we talked about, and the Aggies are pushing it. That's Devin Christensen with the crossover to the rack. No good on the layup. Rebounded by the Wolverines. See this up-tempo game. This is what we expected. Both teams are out and running. It's going to be a fast start. And a foul committed by the Aggies. Looks like a shooting foul. That'll send Finch Cardwell to the free throw line. Yeah, it looked like, as you mentioned, the Wolverines started, uh, excuse me, the, the Aggies started out in some type of a 1-2-2 zone pressure. And they looked to extend that. And their top of the player was, uh, you know, the top of that 1-2-2 zone was at half court. So maybe the Aggies are trying to push the Wolverines out. Maybe it's just a temporary thing to start the game off. But you'll know, see if they fall back into that. Finch Cardwell, good on our first free throw. And we're awaiting the second. No good rebounded by the Aggies, so Wolverines strike first. And it looks like a uh, kind of a pushing foul there. No, not a shooting foul, though. Yeah, the Wolverines, they're going to have to guard on the perimeter because these first couple possessions, Utah State is spreading the ball out. They're spreading the court, and they're getting it to their guards and letting them drive. Tremendous inbound play by the Aggies to get an easy layup. It looked like they caught the Wolverines uh, confused there. Yeah, and, and look at see look at this defense that the Aggies are playing. They're, they're masking it almost looks like a 3-2-2 two, two, or excuse me, a 3-2 or a 1-2-2. Two, two. The Aggies are going to have to take care of the ball. Yeah, and that's the second turnover forced by the Aggies. Wolverines having a hard time getting good shots. Aggies getting to the rim again, passes out of it. Open shooter. It looks like she stepped on the line there, so it would have been a 2. And a, a nice box out there by Whitney Mansfield. Yeah, great box out. And you see this pressure from the Aggies really getting in the, the face of the Wolverines. Got to protect that basketball. Be strong. Don't force anything that's not there. Loose ball gathered up by the Aggies. This is a very fast pace to start this basketball game. Something I think favors the Aggies. And they get right to the rim for the layup. Yeah, that goes back to the, the key to the game. One of the keys of the game for the Wolverines, solid transition defense. That was tough. The Wolverines were put in a tough position there. And as you mentioned, a, a nice basket there driving to the rim. Great pass there down to Mansfield for the layup. Important that you get easy baskets against the zone it, like that. It really is. And move the ball and hit the open teammate. Make quick passes. Don't let the ball stand in one place. That was, that was beautiful there. And you see the Wolverines going into a somewhat of a zone defense there as well. Partially blocked there by Ali Finch Cardwell, and the Wolverines push it. It's Jenkins now. Great pass down to Mansfield. Double team passes out of it. Jensen puts the ball on the floor. Good from about 15. Yeah, that's a great possession because they look to push the ball up the, up the floor. It wasn't there. Stayed patient. We get a long three-point <laughs> yeah. shot there from Devin Christensen. She's not afraid to shoot it. It looks like she has the green light from anywhere. She does. She's going to have it. You know, and, the, and the Wolverines are going to have to spread out that defense. Whitney Jenkins, no good on the long-range shot. Great offensive rebound there. And it looks like the Wolverines will reset. Jenkins again from the corner, no good. Rebounded by the Aggies. Getting some good looks, though. Yeah, really good looks. And here goes the Aggies up in transition once again. They're pushing that basketball. Yeah, they're doing a great job of getting to the rim. Wolverines pushing it now. Great pass from Sidney Gray down low to Whitney Jenkins. Great job of reading the zone defense there. A nice opening underneath. Just made a simple cut and was rewarded right under the rim. Devin Christensen passes to the corner. That's McKinley Williams passes it off to Jenna Johnson. Close shot. Rebounded by Sydney Gray. She does a great job of rebounding it from that point guard position. Wolverines, go ahead. I was just going to say, look how many times the Wolverines have made a pass ahead in transition. They've got that ball out in transition, getting some open shots. Mansfield with the left hand reverse layup, giving the Wolverines a 9-4 lead. Looks like they uh, kind of found a way to get through that zone. Yeah, I think the guards need to penetrate, and the guards just cannot stand around the perimeter. They're going to have to penetrate because that forces defenses to move, and then they could dish it off to perimeter or to post players or inside players who are open. Jensen with the rebound, tries to push it down, gets it to Mansfield. Gray was cutting, did not get her the ball. Jensen 
partially blocked from behind. That was good defense by the Aggies. Both teams pushing the basketball at every opportunity. Johnson now, now it's Christensen wide open, three from the top, and it's good. Christensen connects with the first three of the game. Yeah, see, that's that's a tough defensive position to be in there because you know she took the long three-point shot, the possession before. So you got to get out on her, make her drive, because she'll shoot those shots no matter where she is. Wolverines now with it. Heavy pressure by the Aggies, and it's another turnover. Aggies have a fast break layup. Jennifer Schlott, good with the left hand. A little 5-0 run there to answer the UVU run, and we're tied at nine. You know, don't, don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you know those turnovers just kill you because when you turn that basketball over to a guard at the three-point line, it's off and running. Great post pass there by Gray down to Sammy Jensen, who drew the foul, and we'll get two free throws. And it looks like we'll have our first timeout of the game. 9-9, nine to nine, and we'll be back with more action here from the UCU Center in just a moment. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Wolverines jumped up 9-4, and then the Aggies have put together a 5-0 run since then. Yeah, beautiful pass there. You know, this is something that the Wolverines can work as we see the replay there. You see City Gray passing it in from way past the three-point line into Sammy Jensen. I think that the Wolverines have done a really nice job and what they can continue to do is if the Aggies are going to play that zone, they can use the, the zone against the Aggies by, by moving the ball, pass fakes, shot fakes, get the defense moving because in a zone there's a lot of open space. There are a lot of gaps that can be taken advantage of. You know, Wolverine bigs, uh, their front court players can fa uh, flash to the basketball. The perimeter players can look to drive. I like how the Wolverines have attacked the offense early. They just have to keep those turnovers down. A couple substitutions. Tina Doty has checked in for the Wolverines and also Crystal Turner for the Aggies. Forced turnover by the Wolverines. Doty picks it up and gets it to Gray. She's pushing it. And the Aggie set up in that zone. Also in is Baczynski for the Wolverines, number 21. Now see, there we, I don't know if it was a design play, but you had what looked like a you know a high low. You know, as you mentioned, you had Baczynski out on the three-point line, tried to lob it into Sammy Jenkins. She was being held and a foul was called. But that's good offense. You know, get it out on the get it out on the perimeter, look inside. Gray to Jenkins, back to Gray. Doty gets an open shooter in the right corner. Good for the Wolverines. Really nice job there, swinging the ball around the perimeter, finding the open player, find the open uh, open space on the floor. That was great offense and a great play run out of bounds. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to find us on Facebook. Just search UVU Women's Basketball and be sure to give us a like. Aggies with the made basket. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out still what this zone is. Look at this, they've got three perimeter players, two underneath, and they're giving the Wolverines a lot of space on the backside or on the lower part of that zone. Freshman Sam Loggins for the Wolverines checks in as well. And uh, offensive rebound blocked by the freshman. Sam Loggins, that sends the Wolverines out on a fast break. Doty, long two, no good. Rebounded by the Wolverine or the Aggies, excuse me. You like that shot in transition? Yeah, I think it was a good shot. I mean, she was in rhythm. It was a good looking shot. I didn't, I didn't think it was forced. I, I think it was a good rhythm jump shot. 
Tied up here. Aggies with the basketball. Puale Furtado with it. Dumps it off to Stephanie Bairstow. No good. And let's see who, and it's out of bounds on the Wolverines. Aggies will keep it. Yeah, the Aggies have a lot of players who, when they get the ball on the perimeter, are looking to drive to the basket. We really haven't seen much of a post up for many of their players. So you'll spread that court, which means the Wolverines are going to have to be do a great job on their one-on-one -on -one defense and are going to have to have good team defense to always be aware where they can give help. Great play by Sammy Jensen to keep it alive. The Aggies pick it up, though, and it's Christensen. Passes it off to Crystal Turner. Turner to Bearstow. Drives down the lane with the right-handed scoop. No good. Comes off funny, and it looks like who has that? It's out of bounds. Looks like the Wolverines will get possession. And Finch Cardwell will check into the game for Tina Doty. Gray brings it down for the Wolverines, Sydney Gray. Recently married over the summer, changed her name, so if you don't know who she is, her name, last name was changed. That confused me. I was yeah. wondering where, where her <laughs> usual last name went. That makes sense. Missed shot by the Wolverines. Aggies pushing it. That's Furtado with it. Long three-pointer by Crystal Turner. No good. Nice offensive rebound. Missed. Another offensive rebound, missed, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds by the Wolverines. Yeah, that's tough on those long three-point shots. What that normally means is you're going to get a lot of long rebounds. And I, you know, that possession, the Wolverines gave up a couple offensive rebounds. You're going to have to have everybody crash in the glass because Utah State does have a tall lineup in there. Doty checks in again for the Wolverines. Another three-pointer for the Aggies. No good, but rebounded again by the Aggies, and they'll reset with Furtado. Tries to get down the lane on Sidney Gray, and they're going to get a traveling. There's that great one-on-one -on -one defense we talked about the Wolverines had to have. I mean, it's, it's very tough when you're a defender and you know you're all by yourself and you've got a player that's driving to the basket that you have to defend. But Sidney Gray did a great job that time keeping the, def the, the offensive player in front of her the whole time. Doty with a quick three, no good. Re rebounded, Finch Cardwell with it now, pulls it out. It looks like the Wolverines are gonna reset back to Finch Cardwell, puts the ball down and looks like it's deflected out by the Aggies. The Aggies are getting their hands on a lot of those cross court passes. The Wolverines gotta make a, a, make a, a, a more crisp pass there. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Bus pass, five dollars. UVU t-shirt, so you can impress the ladies, twenty-five dollars. iPod Nano, one hundred and twenty dollars. A degree from UVU, so you can afford your own car someday. Prices. For everything else, there's student loans. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. Welcome back to Orm, Utah, where the Aggies and Wolverines are tied up at 11. It got, kind of got off to a fast start, and since then the defense have settled in, and scoring has a little, been a little bit more difficult. Yeah, and neither team shooting real well. The Aggies are 5 of 22, 22 percent, 1 of 8 from the three-point line. Uh, Wolverines are 5 of 13. Now where Utah State is finding success is they've got 16 rebounds, eight on the offensive glass. So uh, Wolverines need to shore up that part of the game because they have given up some offensive rebounds. Sidney Gray with it. Baczynski puts it on the floor. Great pass down to Jensen. It's stripped away. Tremendous defensive play there. 
by Jenna Johnson of the Aggies. And a turnover forced. Wolverines with it now. It's Finch Cardwell bringing it down to Gray. Finch Cardwell is another player who was married over the summer, but she decided to keep part of her name in there. Nice pass down low. Can't get the roll. Deflected out by Jensen, but the Aggies bring it down. Yeah, Wolverines have got a lot of shots right in the middle of the paint. I like how easy that's coming to them. Credit their guards and their big players for getting open inside. Jensen with the rebound off the McKinley Williams miss of Utah State. And Doty now has it. Back to Gray. Jensen down the lane. Fouled. Good aggressive move there from the reigning Great West Conference Player of the Year. Yeah, great play. She's got a couple of, she's had this, been in this situation a couple times already tonight. She's got the ball at the high post. And we've seen her take a couple of shots when it's there. And she's she's got great looks there. And in that case, she saw more of a lane to the basket and drove. So very versatile. And I, I like it I like it when she gets it there. You know, she gets it at that high post, she has the ability to make the jump shot or drive to the basket. Wolverine fans, you can watch the game live online tonight as well at uvu.edu slash uvutv. That's uvu.edu slash uvutv. And the make by Jensen. And Aggies have the ball now. Heavy pressure, double team in the corner. Aggies with it still, swinging it around the outside. Drive down the lane by Jennifer Schlott. No good, gets her own rebound, goes up again, no good. Rebounded by Baczynski. Good solid rebound there. Yeah, great rebound. They gave up another offensive board there. They've got to have more help from every single player coming in to rebound because the Aggies are getting a lot of second chance points. Doty, a couple feet off the three point line. Jenkins back to Doty, who is kind of the three-point specialist on this team. And nice high-low work there with Sammy Jensen. And that's what we just talked about. Right at the high post, she's given free reign to move and feel where the zone allows her to. A great entry pass, and she turned and just sh and shot that one with confidence. Jennifer Schlott for three, no good. Gets her own rebound and keeps it alive. And now that is Jenna Johnson. Passes it off to Christensen, pump fakes. Right to the cup, no good. They're missing a lot of layups there at the rim. And the Wolverines are pushing it. That's Finch Cardwell. Dumps it off to Jenkins, a short mid-range jumper, good. That's a great job. Anytime you get you know, the point guard or your shooting guard like they did with Devin Christensen going for a layup and missing it, they immediately got out in transition in a very nice, unselfish play. A great job of both players running and hustling. Christensen with it for the Aggies, the Schlott. Cross-court pass dangerous to Ba'aulu. No good and rebounded by Jensen. Having a solid performance already. She had 15 double-doubles last year. Doty for three. Good. Wolverines need that. Now Wolverines very good in transition at that skip pass. I love watching that. We've seen it so many times. At that time, it was a cross-court pass. Doty spotted up and got a great-looking shot. Very confident when she shoots it. Wolverines are an 8-0 run right now, and they're doing it with shot making. The little whistle there. It looks like there was a personal foul on the Wolverines. That's number 33, Whitney Jenkins. Subbing in is Casey Mansfield, who started the game. And also number 22 of the Aggies, that's Haley Thompson. Wide open look for the Aggies. No good. Rebounded by the Wolverines, and they're going to get a foul on the Aggies. Yeah, that's what you have to do in that instance. You know, anytime you get, a, once again, a long three point shot, the key to boxing out is you, you've got to have contact. You've got to have body contact. You can't just go to an area and hope the ball is going to come there. A very nice job of body contact into the Aggie player. And the ball came right down and was forced to go over the back. There's that unusual zone again by the Aggies that forced a turnover after it, uh, a Doty pass went a little high. Nice! Oh! Looked like a block from here. That was a, an exceptional play by the Wolverines, but a foul nonetheless. Finch yeah. Cardwell. Yeah, so dangerous. You know, tough. You got Devin Christensen coming right at you full speed. I think she made a very good effort and you know, didn't let her get all the way to the basket for a free shot. You know, at least she challenged, and by her reaction, she obviously thought that she did not foul. <laughs> But who, whoever does, right? Exactly. I mean, nobody ever thinks they Nobody, foul. nobody. Very rarely. It's got to be blatant. And even in those cases, 
players still find a way to make it seem like they didn't commit a foul. First free throw is good, Christensen, and the second is good as well. That, I think that's something that makes her such a special player is not only is she dangerous from the perimeter, but she's also deadly from the free throw line. Yeah, and she's going to look to get there a lot. You know, she's definitely going to look to get there often. Solid screen set there by Jensen. Heavy pressure by the Aggies in the zone. Swings it over. Puts the ball on the floor as Jenkins gets it back up top. Finch Cardwell for a long three. Good. They've already made more threes tonight, Matt, than they did against Boise State. Yeah, unbelievable ball movement there. I mean, that, that ball was not in a player for the Wolverines' hands for more than, more than a second, it seemed. <laughs> Two seconds at the most. Great ball movement, great reversal of the basketball, hitting the open, hitting the open shooter. That was great team ball. Wolverines have seven assists on their eight field goal. Makes it in a... Nice defensive play over there by Jenna Johnson of the Aggies to get back on that fast break. We'll take another break. The Wolverines are up 22 to 13, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Welcome back where the Wolverines have opened up a nine point advantage against the Aggies on the road. And it looks like they're doing a great job of getting past that defensive zone pressure and getting some open looks. And lately they've been hitting the three. Yeah, they have. Uh, you know, you look at the statistics for Utah State shooting wise, it, it hasn't been pretty. They've been, they're shooting six of 28 from the field, one of 10 from the three point line, and they've only gone to the free throw line twice. So, you know, that tells you that the Wolverines are doing a nice job defensively, making it difficult for the Aggies uh, to hit any type of jump shot. Another three, Doty, no good, comes off the rim, and Christensen is gonna push it for the Aggies. Interesting little note here about the Aggies. This is the first time in their existence as a women's basketball program that they were preseason pick to finish first in the WAC. Well, and it's their last year, too, in the WAC. They're going to be moving on next year to the Mountain West Conference, and it's been exciting around here to see for the Wolverines because they're going to be, you know, essentially replacing Utah State and going to the WAC Conference. So you know, a, a good barometer, a good meeting point here for both teams. Jensen misses the mid-range J, and the Aggies are pushing it. Nice pass there on the baseline. Heavy pressure by both teams. Wolverines doing a nice job defensively. Christensen is going to get the foul on the ground. Not a shooting foul. Yeah, that was a good call there. Yeah, great defense you had there from Whitney Jenkins. I think she's given an unbelievable effort guarding Devin Christensen just at the last moment. Pushed her with the lower body. Utah State is also featuring a first-year head coach. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Jensen is kind of an errant pass there and turned over another one down to Schlott. She'll attack Jensen and gets the body foul. That'll send her to the free throw line. That's why coaches always want the big players to get the ball into the hands of their guards to bring the basketball up. We see the replay there. Emmy Jensen goes up for the block, but definitely fouls. Number three for Utah State. Jennifer Schlott going to the free throw line. Makes the first one. 22-14. Hard to believe that that's the first free throw. Well, I guess that's the third free throw attempt for the Aggies. Two from Christensen earlier. Now Schlott with the fourth one in there. Four for four from the free throw line. It's been the 
the easy points at the rim and the rebounds that have kept the Aggies in this early part of the game. Yeah, and, and their shooting percentage, as we talked about, hasn't been great as we see a nice lob in once again from the top. So Sammy just has that flexibility, it seems, to work inside, and she moves with the ball as she sees the defense. She's creating a lot of space, and you know, it's great to see when you can have a lob pass from that far out into an interior player. Sammy's working hard inside and getting rewarded for it. Jenna Johnson for three, no good. The shooting woes continue for the Haggies. And it's a one and done. And the Wolverines with the basketball now. Gray double teamed at the midcourt line, but gets it out. Struggled with that zone early, but since then they've done a much better job. And Jensen is really finding a groove in the mid range. Yeah, I mean, I think it all starts with the play outside, you know. Cindy had a wonderful pass inside, created some offense. And when you play a zone, when the Aggies are playing a zone, the Wolverines are able to penetrate that zone, use ball, use the ball fakes, ball movement as you see here, work that ball around, get open shots. Finch Cardwell misses on the three, and they're going to get a timeout by the Aggies. He was not happy with that last missed shot and must be frustrated with the uh, amount of misses that are piling up. Yeah, I think so. You, you know, they, they definitely can't get discouraged by that. You know, they're going to have to keep their heads up because it's unlikely that these shooting woes are going to continue for the whole game. But, you know, from the Wolverines' perspective, keep playing the way that you're playing. Keep being aggressive on offense the way that they have. And I think if they just take their time, if they read what the, what the defense is, and they make the right play, they make the right move, they're going to get they're going to get open shots as they have already so far. In the Aggies' first exhibition game, they're able to shoot 47%, and today they're at 16%. That's a, that's a pretty low number. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a low number. Um, you know, it's not what you want to see as a coach. It, it, I'm sure their coach is in there telling them, look, it's not going to be like that. They're getting good shots. They right. really are. They're right. getting good shots. You know, they just uh, they just haven't fallen for whatever reason. Sometimes uh, it goes that way. But you know, from the Aggies' perspective, just keep doing what they're doing. And same thing for the Wolverines. Wolverines with the their largest lead of the game at 11. Aggies with the basketball. Christensen had, had a, a three early, but it's been kind of quiet since then. Yeah. I think it's been a total team effort and defensive effort all the way around. And there is a three-pointer made. Jenna Johnson, second one of the game for the Aggies. They kind of live and die by that three-pointer, having shot 34 of them in their exhibition game, making 12. Sammy Jensen is having her way down there in the post. Great entry pass and finish. Yeah, I mean, it starts with that cross-court pass, because when you move the ball from one side to the other, the defense has to shift. And in, like in that case, Sammy Jensen just read where the defense went and just filled in the spot that she wasn't, and a nice, great pass inside. Christensen, long three, no good. Good hustle there by Jensen, and the uh, Wolverines come up the rebound. We have a, a new player in for UVU. See, well, I mean, watch this. Look how many players the Wolverines have, or excuse me, the Aggies have outside. A nice block there, but they had four defenders outside the three-point line, so that leaves so much space underneath. Three on two for the Aggies, and they were not able to come up with an easy look on that uh, transition. Yeah, Wolverines caught a good break there because I don't think they were in good position, as you said, for their, their transition defense, but you know, they, they caught a break. Hey, watch, the, watch the defense here from, from the Aggies. I mean, they're, they've got these three guards who are, who are outside. I mean, look how much space is. Look at the middle of the court right yeah, now. There's and nobody in the paint. There's nobody in the paint, and that just gives them a lot of room to move. Huber just checked into the game for the Wolverines. No good on that long three-pointer. Aggies have it. Trailing by 10 here in the later latter parts of the first half. Johnson, who just made a three a moment ago with the basketball, poked away. Great defense by Huber. Mansfield has it now to Huber. Puts the ball. Great drive there right off the bench and gives some good defense and offense. Yeah, really nice play there. Getting the ball off of the turnover, not forcing anything. You know, she looked like she was going to take that three-point shot. Had a nice fake and, and drove it all the way to the basket. A great finish. Taylor Huber off the bench. Sophomore, 5'7", giving some good minutes for Coach Dixon. And the loose ball is out on the Aggies. 3.32 left here. Largest lead of the game, Wolverines lead by 12. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back after this. Amazing 
experience at college isn't just found in the classroom. It's just as important to have a great experience away from the books. At Wolverine Crossing, we totally understand that. Take a look around. We offer an experience that helps you gain the most of what it means to learn and grow. Plus, you won't find better amenities anywhere else. If you're looking for student housing that will enhance your college experience, look no further. Wolverine Crossing. Student living redefined. Conveniently located just across the freeway from UVU. Welcome back, Wolverine fans. Remember to find out more about your UVU women's basketball team. Head on over to WolverineGreen.com. It is the perfect place to get to know your team. There you can find stats, photos, and the complete season schedule. Largest lead, 12 for the Wolverines. If they can finish the half like this, that's got to give them confidence going into the next half. Yeah, important for them to finish the half. And look at this defense that the Aggies are now playing. Looks like they've switched to a man-to-man -man defense. It looks like they may have gone out of that zone. Huber no good on the three. And Schlott, nice pass to a cutting number 25. <laughs> Stephanie Bearstow, that was a very nice play by the Aggies. Yeah, great pass. She threw it to a spot. Now that was a, t a tight fit in there and a, a great pass, great catch, and a tougher finish than people think. Jensen turns it over and the Aggies are running again. Christensen, a three in transition. Oh, unfriendly roll there, but rebounded by the Aggies who have been on the offensive boards all, all evening. Yeah, they've, they've been unbelievable. That, I believe, gives them 11 offensive rebounds on the night. The Wolverines have 19 defensive rebounds, so a lot of rebounding going on for both teams. Yeah, and a lot of offensive rebounds is more second-chance opportunities. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Aggies, they've gotten 37 shots already in this game. I mean, that's, to me, very unusual. The Wolverines have 28 shots, but... And when you see the, the Aggies have 37 shots, you see that they have 11 offensive rebounds. They're getting a lot of opportunity or having a lot of opportunities to score. The Aggies have changed offensive principles, and I think it's a large reason why they have more shots is they're emphasizing kind of an up-tempo offense. Jensen, long, too. She's got range from everywhere. I yeah. mean, she can shoot it inside when she posts up. She can shoot it from the elbow. And we've seen her stretch the floor all the way out to near three-point line. Three missed by the Aggies. Their new style is the run, gun, and have fun by Coach Finkbeiner. And they're showing it. Yeah. I mean, that's you, you watch the first half, and that's how you would describe their offense. A three-pointer. Doty, no good. Rebounded by the Aggies. There have been a couple three-pointers away from really taking a commanding lead in this first half. And just as we talk about run, gun, and have fun, they slow it down. Look at this. <laughs> they, they, their coach tells them to slow it down a little bit. Uh, maybe going to run some, uh, some certain set here, try to get a designated shot. As a player, do you love playing in an offense that's up-tempo and, and emphasizes quick shots? I think so, but they have to be good shots. You know, you, you like playing because you can get into a rhythm of the game, and, you know, that's where when you're playing against a good defense, it's tough to do so. But, you know, the key in that is you always have to make sure that you're getting good shots. You can't force anything. Always make sure that you get a good shot. Finch Cardwell wanted a foul there, but did not get it. And Christensen is pushing it for the Aggies. No good on the layup. Out of bounds on the Wolverines, and Coach Dixon is not happy with the uh, defensive rebounding. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's been their Achilles heel, and you know what, I think it's going to be the rest of the game because just what we've seen in almost 20 minutes of play here, you know, they, they haven't shown the ability to fend off all the offensive rebounds. 12 offensive rebounds already, three for the Wolverines, so a lot more second chances. For the Aggies, they just have not been able to convert that into points. They're shooting 20%. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible how many shots they've gotten and how, how low of a percentage they're shooting. Christensen with a little hesitation step. No good on the layup. Partially blocked, gets the own rebound, and goes back in. That's Crystal Turner for the Aggies. Yeah, that play caused by Devin Christensen's drive. She had to have a defender come over and help and made a nice uh, a nice uh, pass off their shot, off the shot too. Aggies have diced into this lead. It's only eight now. 
was 12 a moment ago. 30 seconds remaining in the half. Doty down the lane, a little flip shot, and they're gonna get a charge. Wasn't able to see, was, was she in position? Yeah, I think it was a good call and great awareness there from Elise Nelson. Uh, you know, the Aggies gone to this man. It slowed down the Wolverines offense. And you get plays like that, which boosts your confidence defensively. When you're in that man, you have a player that gets beat. But a grain awareness there from uh, Elise Nelson, as we said, to step over and take the charge. Looks like the Aggies are going to play for the last shot here. If you're a coach, Finkbeiner, and you get a bucket here to cut it to six or even five, how do you feel? I think you feel great. You know, your percentage is so low. Let, let's see if the Wolverines can get a stop because you know, Aggies are putting together a nice run here at the end of the half. Down the lane and a foul called. Looks like it's going to go on Whitney Mansfield, or Casey Mansfield, excuse me, there, the senior forward who started today in place of Jessica Baczynski. And the Aggies have a chance to cut it to uh, six. Yeah, Wolverines, uh, after the two, two foul shots here, see what the result is. They have the opportunity for the final shot here. Plenty of time with five seconds. Plenty too. of time. Don't need to rush anything. Obviously, first, if there's a miss on the free throw, have to secure the rebound. But you know, let's see what the uh, what the Wolverines do if they if they do indeed get a, a, a last second shot here. Would you would you push on a rebound or, or take a timeout and try and set something up? I, I think you you let your players go. I think you let them play. I think you get it into the hands of your playmakers or of your guard and allow them to create some type of shot. I mean, it is plenty of time. Let's see what the Aggies do defensively. They may go into a man or they may, looks like they may just drop back into this zone. Jensen, Doty, Finch, Cardwell, Huber, and Baczynski on the floor. Two seconds off, can they get a shot? Cardwell gets it off, good at the buzzer. Allie Finch, Cardwell, looked like the Aggies were expecting a shot there. Yeah. And she diced into the lane. Yeah, she almost made a, a nice, well, she did make a hesitation move at the top of the key. I think the Utah State players thought she was gonna pull up for the three, but saw the lane. That's the danger of playing a zone if you're the Aggies because she took it all the way to the basket. All right, 34 to 26 here at the half, Wolverines on top, and we will take a break before our halftime show. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Welcome back to Orm, Utah at Utah Valley University where the Wolverines are leading the visiting Aggies 34-26. With us here we have UVU, a 
Associate Athletic Director Jared Summerson. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. So let's start off and uh, talk about the Wolverine Club. Exactly what is it and how can you be a part of it? Uh, the Wolverine Club is a fundraising arm of UVU Athletics. Uh, we mainly fundraise for uh, Wolverine scholarships. Uh, we spend millions of dollars each year to educate our student athletes, and uh, Wolverine Club's prim primary purpose is to is to fundraise for for our student athletes. Okay. How can people go about uh, donating and being a part of that? Uh, the Wolverine. It's really easy to join. Uh, you can go online at WolverineGreen.com and uh, click the click the link there and. Donate there with a credit card, or you, we take uh, we take cash donations, we take credit card, uh, we also uh, take check donations, and then uh, foundational giving as well. Fantastic, Jared. I think I pronounced your name wrong earlier. Sumption. Sumption. Yeah, that's right. It's it's easy to correct mispronounce. Correct me anytime I say something wrong or I, I misstate a fact. So yeah, I no problem. For that. No problem. Earlier this year, the university and the athletic program was able to have a fairly big announcement in going to the WAC. How excited are people, and, and how hard was it to, to take that next step? Oh, it's, uh, it's, everybody is very, very excited. The community is, is totally behind us. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a great step for the Wolverines. Um, it's been a long time coming. We, uh, we went straight from junior college to Division I. And the next biggest step was finding a permanent home in the Western Athletic Conference. Uh, we know that it's going to be a game changer for us. It already has been in recruiting. Uh, we also, having those automatic bids, automatic qualifiers for the NCAA tournaments, uh, it, it's, it just changes the whole game for us. We're very excited. The momentum just continues to build for the Wolverines. And, and we know that in the, as we go into the future, uh, it's just gonna. It just really just moves us to a different level, uh, level of respect in the community, and uh, and within the within the national scene as well. Being able to have those automatic bid chances. And that starts next next athletic season. It sure does. Yeah, and in, uh, in 2013, we'll start off with uh, soccer and volleyball and cross country, and uh, gonna be exciting. All right. Um, well, Jared. Let me make sure I get your last name right this time. But I uh, would like to thank uh, Associate Athletic Director Jared Sumption for joining us on the Halftime Show. I appreciate it. And uh, have a great one. Thank you very much. Just want to put a plug in for our Wolverine Club luncheon uh, this coming Wednesday. Dave Fox, the uh, Channel 2 news anchor, is coming to speak to us. It's going to be a great time. Noon here in the, the UCCU Center Presidential South Suite. Great. Thank you. We'll take a, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with some uh, stats and commentary on the first half. Come join the student section and cheer for the Mighty Wolverines. Mighty Athletic Wolverine Lead Sports Passes are now available. Your mall pass gets you tickets to every NCAA home game, free food at the tailgate parties, prizes at the games, and lots of new friends. Get more information on their Facebook page or by calling Campus Connection at 801-863-8797. Go UVU! If you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study.
34 to 26 is the score here at the half. The Wolverines on top of the Aggies. And it was the, uh, you know, it was good perimeter shooting by the Wolverines that helped them build this big lead. Yeah, I mean, when we take a look at some of the stats, it's pretty incredible when you look at, you know, we've talked about the first part of this game, how many shots the Aggies have got. They've taken 42 shots right. and they've made nine. So that, that whole run, gun, and have fun is, is really living up to what they wanted. They two of 15 from the three-point line. I think a really key stat for the Utah State, we've been talking about 13 offensive rebounds, 17 defensive, 30 overall rebounds. Um, I, I think the Wolverines have done a really nice job on Devin Christensen, held her one of 10 shooting. She only has five points. So a couple key stats for, for the Aggies. Now, look at the Wolverines shooting 45% from the field, two of 11 from the three-point line. But I like how, how well they've, they've done uh, in a couple areas. They've got 14 points in the paint, so they're not relying on the three-point shot. They are trying to get it inside. And they also have 13 assists to only eight turnovers. So when the Aggies were playing that zone defense, the Wolverines were moving the ball around, getting a good shot, and they, they have 13 assists. I think that's a great stat, something that needs to be emphasized going forward is keep moving the basketball, keep being unselfish, and you know reward your teammates. All right. UVU, tremendous advantage, like you said, shooting percentage-wise, 45 over 21. Let's take a look at some highlights here. Great play there by Mansfield. Christensen's only bucket of the game. Yeah, and you're going to see a lot of these highlights. You, know, you get Sammy Jensen on the inside. We talked about that. But you know, key for the Wolverines, watch, the, watch that ball movement. Watch their spacing. Now they're looking to get out into transition, as we mentioned, as one of the keys to the game. But you know, there's great spacing on the floor. There's great passing. They've done a really nice job offensively. And it's just when they get these turnovers, when they when it, it turns into a tough situation for them, because then the Aggies are going to be out and running. But you know, overall, I think a very good half for the Wolverines. You know, they've got this eight-point lead as we see the ending basket there going to the rim from Allie Cardwell. Like you said, just to highlight your point on great passing, 13 assists for the Wolverines on 15 field goal makes. I mean, that really shows you that the team is sharing the ball. Yeah, they're really sharing the basketball, and, and you can see that. You can see that out on the court. They're doing a very nice job of being unselfish, and, you know, it's fun to watch that. If, if I'm looking at second half or towards the second half, I think that, you know, the Wolverines are going to have to continue to be a – uh, give a good defensive effort on Devin Christensen because, you know, she only had that one shot, that one three-pointer. Um, she's going to look to be very aggressive as we talked about how good of a player she is. But, you know, I I'm, I'm talking so much, if I'm Coach Nixon, about defensive rebounding. We've got we to gotta hold the Aggies from all those offensive rebounds that they're getting and, you know, keep up the defensive effort because it's been, it's been splendid in the first half. Sammy Jensen has been sensational. She's leading the team with 13 points, seven rebounds, so well on her way to her second double-double of the year. But that shooting percentage, six of eight. Yeah, really and she's got, she's got the ball in, in a couple great spots. You know, she, she hasn't really forced anything. Uh, I don't think that she's taken any shots that have, been, that have been out of the ordinary. So I think this is pretty exciting time here for the Wolverines. You know, we mentioned it a little bit earlier where you, you've got UVU leaving the Great West Conference going into the WAC, and you have the Aggies leaving the WAC going to the Mountain West Conference. So you know, as I mentioned briefly in the first half, this is a, a, a good measuring point for the Wolverines where they are moving into the, you know, moving into the WAC. They can compare themselves to the, themselves to the Aggies, see how the Aggies finish out at the end of the year. You know, it's just a really exciting time around here. You know, it's a two-hour drive separate these two teams. And, you know, I think you know, factoring in all those, factoring in the stats and everything that we've talked about, you know, it should make for a very exciting second half. Yeah, I was able to talk with Jared Sumption right before we started doing this segment, and he mentioned that the Wolverines were extremely pleased and excited to be in the WAC. What, what do they need to do to be successful moving into that next conference? Well, I think, you know, it starts with... You know what they're doing now. Obviously, they've got to where they are, and they've been very successful in doing so. So I think they need to just keep doing what they're doing. You know, being in a conference is going to help them. They're going to be able to get better recruiting. They're they're just going to improve in every area. So you can't take anything for granted. They've got to just keep working hard. And they're focusing on the Great West Conference. Their last year in it this year, they'd like to go out with the championship. The Wolverines are on top, 34-26. We'll take another break and get back here for the second half.
Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. Welcome back to the UCCU Center. We're about 35 seconds away from the second half tipping off. And the Wolverines hold an eight point advantage. Sammy Jensen, the only scorer in double digits right now. She's leading all scores with 13. Really playing up to that high expectation that the team has. Yeah, and she's done well. We mentioned at the very beginning of the game that they're gonna have to have a balanced team effort. She clearly is leading the way, but you know, you have every player but two that played, scored, and, and contributed some way. You know, we have, we've seen great contributions from every player that's played in the game. So Sammy is, is definitely the, the leader on the team, but you know, in that first half, I think what helped stretch the, the game out for the Wolverines was the effort that they had from you know, all the substitutes and the bench players that came in. You know, UVU had seven points off of the bench, so you know, they had some contribution. Tina Doty came in off the bench, provided a nice spark, and Taylor Huber was another player I was really impressed with. And they're going to need strong bench play going forward, especially with the tempo that's played in this game. A lot of minutes for that bench. Yeah, it's been up and down. I, I think something to watch kind of starting off the second half here is what defense are the Aggies going to play? Are they going to go back into that zone that they've had? And I think that it's hard to tell, but I think they've switched up their defense uh, you know, during the game. The last couple of positions, they went more of a man-to-man -man defense. So, you know, what defense are the Aggies going to run? Gray, Jenkins, Mansfield, Jensen, and Finch Cardwell starting in the second half. And they uh, forced a traveling violation right out of the get-go. And no surprise there. She was one. Franny Valu was one of the key players of the game coming into it. And so you know, no surprise that they're going to try and get her going very early on with the first possession. A cross-court pass leads to a turnover on the Aggies with three-on-one break. And one blocking foul. Whitney Jenkins can't believe it. And the Aggies convert in transition. Yeah, Whitney tried to get over there for the, for the charge, but you know, that was a clear, a clear blocking foul, a really nice move there for McKinley Williams. A nice start for the Aggies here with that quick basket. In the end one, cut it to five points. Williams having a nice game for the Aggies. Mansfield, Finch Cardwell. Another cross-court pass turnover. That's a dangerous pass. And the Aggies out there. Christensen, nice no-look pass back to Christensen. We'll take the corner three. Good. The Aggies, just like that, have erased what was a 12-point deficit earlier all the way down to two. It looks like the fun is back in the run, gun, and fun. Well, you know, when we, when we look at what happened in that first half, it's very unusual that a team shoots 21% from the field. And so I made that comment thinking because, you know, just all, all the games that I watch in basketball in general, you know, it, it tends to not stay that way for the entire game. So it, it comes at no surprise that starting out, it's been the complete opposite for the Aggies. So, you know, the Wolverines have kind of not helped themselves in this because they've had two cross-court passes that have been intercepted and they were, they were, you know, quite simply just lazy passes. 
right into the hands of the defenders, and that gets Utah State out and going. So, you know, those two turnovers lead to baskets, and, you know, that the lid wasn't going to stay on the, the hoop forever. Right. You know, and, and it looks like the Aggies have, have picked up some momentum here. But, you know, Wolverines still have the two-point lead. They just have to cut down on those turnovers. You're the player, so you can correct me here, but what I thought what the Wolverines did really well towards the last part of that first half was when they wanted to swing the ball, they did it by passing it to the yeah. top of the key and over rather than that direct pass. Well, there's nothing, you're right, there's nothing wrong with a skip pass, but with what we see here, the length of those two skip passes. Right. You know, the length of those two attempted skip passes makes it nearly impossible because you got defenders that can jump in the lane. And, and you're right. I mean, the ideal situation is to, to just move it around the perimeter and not have to do those skip passes. It's hard when you're out there because it looks open, but because it's such a long pass and defenders are, are tall and, and long, you know, they're able to step in the, step in the path of the basketball. But, but I think you bring up a very good point there in that the Wolverines, their best possessions are when they don't try and force it, but they can just move it naturally around the perimeter. We're only 50 seconds into this half, and the eight-point halftime deficit has been trimmed to two, and the Wolverines, let's see what they do here to counter this Aggie run. Christensen nearly misses, and now we got a wide-open gray. Good. That's a big basket for the Wolverines. Yeah, see, there you go. No, no, no force skip pass there, just a good solid pass around the perimeter. The Aggies are seem like they have a little bit more life in their zone defense. They're extending it out further, closer to the half-court line. And, and they're going to go for steals. You said it. Devin Christensen went for a steal there. Nice pass down to Jenna Johnson. Oh, and Ba'alulu. Kind of a, I don't, I don't know if an alley-oop's the right term, but that was a nice play to kind of gather it in midair and then lay it up. Yeah, really nice play. Bring the defender up and it just a, a wonderful dump off. Jensen, great look down low to Mansfield. Blocked, gets her own rebound and fouled on the second chance attempt. Great play there to get a second chance opportunity. Yeah, I think that's when the Wolverines are at their best, and when they get Sammy at that high post and allow her just a lot of freedom where she can move up and down the lane and she can do what she wants because, you know, she's got, you know, we talk about her, her scoring ability, her rebounding ability, but she can pass the basketball too. She makes great decisions when she gets it, and, you know, that time just a, a nice dump off there to Mansfield. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've been really impressed with her decision making. It's not all just about the scoring yeah. or the rebounding, like you said. Yeah, and she and she passes it. And with, you know, coming into the game, Utah State has, pro has definitely scouted this. You know, they, they're going to focus a lot of their attention on her, so that opens up opportunities for teammates. Wolverines up by four. Johnson with the fake, puts it on the floor. Nice take to the hoop. 38-36. See this, yeah, sorry, see this defense? I mean, look how, look how far out it is. They're trying to get into the passing lanes, and they force a turnover. Christensen, nice defense there by Whitney Jenkins to stand to ground, and that's going to push the Wolverines out. Finch Cardwell all the way, no foul, but stripped away. I think you got to pass that one off when you have a three-on-one like that. Yeah, I, I think it was a pretty tough decision for her because I think Faalua went over at the very last second. But right. You're right, a, a tough situation there. Key is the Wolverines get the ball, basketball back. Jensen, great pass off the entry play. Lead back at four. Tensity's picking up here. Yeah, it really has. And you see the Wolverines, I think they tried a zone defense the first couple of times, but looks like they're switching back now to a man-to-man. -man. Johnson took it to the hoop the last time down. Another attack down the lane and draws the foul this time. She has been the high scorer for the Aggies today. 11 points, 4 of 10 shooting. A couple of assists to go along with that. So she's really stepped up in the place of Christensen and Fa'alulu, who have played better in the second half, but had a, a you know, not the first half they would have liked. Yeah, and you see that, that was a great read there from the Utah State offense there. I mean, they're, they're once again just trying to spread out that. Jenna Johnson gets the ball on the perimeter sees that the lane is open. It's tough for Sammy Jensen to make that make it all the way over. Ball poked out by Christensen. Their defense is extends all the way to the half court line and it's very ferocious. Yeah, it looks like they've fallen back here a little bit. I think they're going into a man defense here. Looks like they're changing up once again, changing their defense. Whitney Jenkins with the basketball now. 
Puts it on the floor. Great pass down to Jensen. Stripped away by Christensen. She's calling for the ball on the way down. She gets it down the lane with the left hand. Great play from the defensive strip all the way down to the made layup. Yeah, once again, a great play there. Sammy Jensen had the nice post up with a duck in move, but a great strip there. Now, I, I, I want to make a point here because Utah State, it, whoever they are guarding, their players are swiping at the ball. They're attempting to strip the basketball in every possession. So the Wolverines have got to make sure that they're firm with that basketball because the Aggies are going for it. They're jumping in the passing lanes. They're swinging. They're swiping at every opportunity. And they're getting up into uh, the space of the Wolverine players. Jensen steps into a long two. Good. Wolverine still shooting a very good percentage. 49% now on the evening. Much needed basket there. The Wolverines have been struggling, but a very nice shot there from Wendy Jenkins on the perimeter. Sydney Gray with her second personal foul. No one in real foul trouble danger at this point. Pin deep is Johnson. No good with the right hand. Rebounded by Gray. Lucky that the ball wasn't stolen there by Johnson. Now Jensen, one dribble. Nice defense. And a foul called on Ba'alulu. Not only is the intensity picked up, but it's got a lot more physical. Yeah, it has. And you see that Sammy Jensen went up for that shot looking for contact. And Fa'alulu was waiting for her because it was a, a great no call there, I thought, from the officials. The ball came back to Sammy, went back up for the shot and, and got the foul. But you're exactly right. It's becoming, it's becoming much more physical, and you can feel the intensity definitely building here. Jensen good on the free throw. She's at a weak spot today, and I'm nitpicking here. She's only two of five from the free throw line. Yeah, she had a couple early misses, right? right. She she missed uh, missed some of those free throw shots early. No good. Two of six, leaving some points out there. Great play by the Wolverines. That's Finch Cardwell on the steal. Gets it back. And Jenkins, great steal there by Va'alulu of the Aggies on a high-low attempt. Pace is, everything's picking up. The pace, the physicality. Looks like UVU is going to try and slow it down now as Finch Cardwell calls a play, and we'll have a sub check in here in just a moment. Jensen at the elbow. Mansfield with the long two. Good. She's been solid from that uh, mid-range baseline jumper today. Yeah, yes, she has. And, you know, these are much-needed baskets for the Wolverines because the Aggies are making a pretty ferocious charge. You see they're trying to clear that ball out as we get a turnover stepping on the sideline, giving that ball to Jenna Johnson, trying to allow her to create from the top of the key. 45-39, to 39, Wolverines led by as many as 12 earlier in the game. Lead is now six, and we'll take a break and be back after this. Back to Orm, Utah, here's a replay here on the Jensen foul, as you can tell there. Nice play there. Kind of looks like uh, the foul occurred on the first attempt rather than the second, but. Yeah, it was a good, I think a good no call there at the very first because you know, it, it just wasn't a foul. Right. But a uh, lucky break for the Wolverines. The ball falls right back into Sammy's hands and she's able to go right back up with it. Doty in the Wolverines. Tina Doty, that is. 
Heavy pressure again, double team, and they're gonna force another turnover out of it. And Furtado pushes it down to Christensen. Nice defense there by Doty, but nevertheless, Christensen able to convert. Yeah, on the offensive end for the Wolverines, the last place that they need to be or want to be is in the corners yep. because Utah State's looking to trap. So at all at all times, if they do get in the quarter, corners, they're gonna have to get the ball out because the Aggies want the ball in the corners. Nice pass there down to Mansfield. It's amazing when they stay out of those corners and they, they have good team ball movement, they're able to find good looks. Yeah, the temptation when you play against a zone is that the perimeter players stay out on the perimeter. But it works best when they're able to drive and get into those open spaces in the zone. Fa'alulu. Long three-pointer, gets it to go. I don't think she called glass, did she? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> she's, she's had a strong second half she here has. for the Aggies. She has. She was one of the key players, so it's no surprise to us. You know, she has, and you knew she didn't play a lot in the first half, and so she was going to come out aggressive. Doty tries to answer in and out, no good. And the Aggies come down with the rebound. That's Johnson, and they get it to Christensen. Puts it down all the way to the rack. No good, no call. Aggie fans not happy. And Finch Cardwell all the way down the lane with the right hand, no good. Christensen pushing it. A lot of transition, pull up three. No good, rebounded by Doty. Yeah, I don't think that was a very good shot there. There was nobody there underneath. That was a four shot. They should have just pulled that ball out. How hard is it as a player to pull up for a shot like that. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, she was she was dribbling right to left, and she's a right-handed shooter, so you know, that's a tough shot, and she came up short, so you know, that shows how tough it was. Jensen, little spin move around Fa'alulu, and gets it to go. She's had a strong game. 18 points, nine rebounds, one more away from that double-double. And we're seeing you know, all-round game, jump shots, driving, free throws post-up game. You know, that was a great a great post-up move that she made. Furtado down the lane, kicks it out. Another three-pointer, no good. Nice play there by the Aggies, but Gray picks up the loose ball and she's pushing it. Little fatigue setting in now and a errant pass. Another unforced turnover there by the Wolverines. It gets very frustrated to see that because, you know, they're in such a great rhythm. There's no need to force that, that ball there. Uh, you, you mentioned it, this, this game has picked up in intensity. You know, you see players out there struggling for breath, players signaling that they need to come out and they need a break. So, you know, a really tough, uh, really tough game out there right now. And it, you, know, you said it earlier, too, uh, how physical it, it really has become. A lot of subs for the Aggies. In for them, J uh, Elise Nelson, Pule Furtado, Stephanie Berstow as well. Christensen takes a break, and also Haley Thompson. So pretty much the whole second unit for the Aggies is in there right now, and most of the starters stand for the Wolverines. Nice play there to keep the ball, and Jensen gets the rebound and the double-double. She had 15 of those last year and already has two in their first two games this year. Yeah, it's almost a given. You know, she's so good at that. Tough layup there by Winnie Jenkins as she drove to the lane and rebounded by Furtado. Right down the lane, gets past Sydney Gray, misses the layup, rebounded by Mansfield. Casey Mansfield, Tina Doty, no good. How do you feel about that shot? I think it was a good shot. I mean, you know, it was a little bit different than the one Devin Christensen had a little bit earlier. That wasn't, I don't think, a four shot. She was set and she was ready, just didn't fall. 49-46. This has the makings of a, a close game going down the stretch. Heavy pressure by the Aggies. Jenkins out of the trap. Passes it to Doty. And nice drive there by Winnie Jenkins. Draws contact and she should be going to the free throw line. Now, I don't think in this game have we even come close to the shot clock running off. I don't think we have. It's been exciting. You see a nice drive there from Whitney and going to be going to the free throw line when we come back.
Come join the student section and cheer for the Mighty Wolverines. Mighty Athletic Wolverine League Sports Passes are now available. Your mall pass gets you tickets to every NCAA home game, free food at the tailgate parties, prizes at the games, and lots of new friends. Get more information on their Facebook page or by calling Campus Connection at 801-863-8797. Go UVU! If you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. Welcome back, Wolverines up by three. Uh, Casey Mansfield started the game today in, instead of Jessica Baczynski, and she has played well. Ten points on four-six shooting. Yeah, eight rebounds too. She's uh, she's contributed on the uh, on the rebounding front. You know, a couple a couple of statistics I wanted to point out: um, the Wolverines with 20 points in the paint, and USU with 26. You've seen in the second half the Aggies become a little bit more aggressive going inside and driving to the basket. So uh, 26 points in the paint for the Aggies. Points off of turnovers. The Wolverines have 15 turnovers. Aggies have turned that into 18 points. And the Wolverines have only six points off turnovers. And USU eight points in transition, two for the Wolverines. So yeah. you know, interesting to see how that's, those stats are going to play out because it's turned to the Aggies' favor in those categories. Devin Christensen down the lane. She wanted that three-pointer, but stepped into a better shot there. Yeah, much better. You know, that's you know, being out there and, and being in that situation on that shot, you know, you just have your rhythm. When you can not take a shot, take a pump fake and a drive, it's just a much better shot. Another turnover forced. Aggies looking to tie the game. Nice play by Allie Finch Cardwell. Coming up with the rejection there and letting the defense set up on this inbound play. Aggies trailed by eight at the half, cut it to two. Another great block, Sammy Jensen. It looked like, the, was there a horn that went off there? There, there was, I don't know what for. Maybe in a, it wasn't for the shot clock, that's for sure. Jensen down the lane, gets contact, and goes to the free throw line. The chance to extend the Wolverines' lead. At what point would you say in a, in a tight game like this, do you want to get it to your star player to kind of take you the rest of the way? Well, I think you think you've got to be looking to them at every point, but you know, I think it's also important. Excuse me, important that there's you know other players involved because you can't just rely on on one player. Um, but great players, what they do is they make it happen. You know, they make it so you have to give them the basketball because. You know, they just they do so well, and that's what Sammy's done. You know, got it started with the block on one end, finished it with free throws on the other. Wolverines up by three. Lost and a turnover. Jensen kind of falls awkwardly, but she looks to be all right, and the Wolverines are pushing it. Cardwell to Jenkins down the lane, and a turnover there. And a, a turnover, one turnover deserves another, huh? Giving it right back. <laughs> right. A lot of turnovers in this game. And this will be good for the Wolverines here. Slow it down a little bit. Uh, the game has become pretty frantic. I think it'll do them good to just slow it down, run their offense, see, and they get, a, they get a foul called against the Aggies as a result. There's an off-the-ball foul there called on number two. Hey, UVU students, are you a member of the mall yet? If not, Check out the Mighty Athletic Wolverine League where you can get great discounts on all things sports related and more at UVU Mall. That was the Aggies' fifth team foul. A couple more and uh, Wolverines will be in the bonus. Doty, little floater, gets it to go. Pushes that lead back to five. Yeah, really nice pull up there. The saying stopped on a dime. She definitely did that. A great pull up there, not forcing it into the defender. Jensen outlets it. Doty on the run. Gets it, goes up, and good. 4-0 run there by the Wolverines. Getting that lead back in a little uh, breathing room. Yeah, it's all started with their defense. And they had a block, they had a turnover. You know, just a really nice job of getting things going with their defense. Long three-pointer, Crystal Turner, no good. Rebounded by Jensen. She's pushing it. 
Aggies looking tired. Doty has it. Pulls up. No good. Last year she sat out. She's a transfer from New Mexico University, the Lobos. And uh, it looks like to be the main bench player off the bench for the Wolverines. And I think she's got the makings to be a really good shooter. And I know she's, as I, as I mentioned, she looks like she's very confident when she shoots that, but she knows when to take the right shot. And she has a great sense of shooting. Jenkins to Mansfield, down the lane, stolen away by Jenna Johnson. They've done a great job of getting their hands in there, as you mentioned earlier. Johnson tries to go all the way, gets the late whistle, and that will send her to the free throw line. Yeah, tough play there. I think they're going to call that on Doty. Yeah, it looks like they are. And she had her because of her defense before the foul was called in a very tough spot. Didn't really get her with the arm. I think they called it with the lower body there. But... You know, that, going back to what we just were talking about, the Wolverines put together a nice little run there, extended their lead to what they have it now at seven points because of their defensive effort. And I think it's going to come down to that in the last eight and a half minutes there. It's going to be, you know, how well can the Wolverines play defense against the Aggies because the Aggies are going to look to be very aggressive, get the ball spread out, get it into the hands of their point guards. You know, and, and tonight, I mean, Jenna Johnson's been a big factor as she's at the free throw line now. She's been a big factor in tonight's game. So how are they going to defend Johnson? How are they going to defend Christensen in the last eight and a half minutes? Both of them have 14 apiece, uh, tied for our leading score for the Aggies. The Wolverines are able to finish this one off. A lot of time left, so it can't even come close to determining a winner there. But this will be the first win UVU has had over Utah State since 2006, 2007, and that was right in this building. Yeah, a long time ago, and you know, it's kind of a, a, the UVU women's basketball team and the UVU men's basketball team kind of have established somewhat of a rivalry game or a series with, uh, with the Aggies each year. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully that continues as we each move up in conferences. Vince Cardwell pulls up, good. Almost lost it and was able to get two points out of it. Yeah, there go the Aggies again, just swiping at the ball, trying to get those steals. Johnson for three, top of the arc, no good. Rebounded by Ba'alulu. And that's Jennifer Schlott with the ball, resets down the lane, kicks it out. Ba'alulu, looks like she stepped on the line there, no good. Rebounded by Casey Mansfield. She gets it to Jenkins, pushing it. Pulls up, no good. And they're going to get a loose ball foul on Casey Mansfield. That'll be her third personal foul. The Wolverines are up by seven, trying to hold on with 7.36 remaining. We'll take a break and be back with more action here on UVU TV. was born on the beach. So the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Having an amazing experience at college isn't just found in the classroom. It's just as important to have a great experience away from the books. At Wolverine Crossing, we totally understand that. Take a look around. We offer an experience that helps you gain the most of what it means to learn and grow. Plus, you won't find better amenities anywhere else. If you're looking for student housing that will enhance your college experience, look no further. Wolverine Crossing. Student living redefined. Conveniently located just across the freeway from UVU. You're watching UVU Women's Basketball here on UVU TV, and they have a seven-point lead with 7.36 remaining. What do they need to do to finish this one off and get a big win? Yeah, we see the replay there of Whitney Jenkins taking up. I think they still need to do what she did there. You know, I think they still need to be aggressive in transition, but they need to be smart. Uh, I think that the Aggies are going to get the ball into the hands of Devin Christensen and Jenna Johnson, and Jennifer Schlott is the one who handles it, bringing the ball up. And I think that those players are going to try and drive to the basket. So I think for the, for the Wolverines, it's going to come down to how they can defend on the perimeter and how they can rebound because Utah State with 15 offensive rebounds, they're going to get shots up. And I think it's going to come down to, a couple, to those factors. It'll be interesting to see what Christensen does down the stretch here. Nice help defense by Doty. 
She's had a strong second half. She's always a threat to score. Schlott to inbound to Johnson. Back to Schlott, takes the three. No good. Rebounded by the Aggies. Kicks it out, Schlott driving down the lane. With the left hand, nice play there. And that's what we just mentioned. You see what happened, they got a long three-point shot, they got an offensive rebound, which we just mentioned, and they got a drive to the basket from Schlott. So it's, it's gonna be those two factors. Doty, Jenkins. Oh, and they're gonna get a reaching foul there on Va'alulu. I believe that will send the Aggies into the bonus. One and one it is. It's a good place to be. Yeah, it is. And, you know, that aggressiveness from Whitney Jenkins and, and you, you get Sidney Gray that's out there that's being aggressive. You get Allie Cardwell. So all these perimeter players, you know, drive, be aggressive, penetrate, but at the same time, you've got to make sure that you're smart about it. And, and, but, and sorry, by smart, I mean, they don't force anything. If you don't have it, there's no problem with bringing that ball out and working the shot clock. Some of the best Wolverines offense in this half has, has been when they've reset, yeah. slowed down, moved the ball around and got a good look. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it doesn't always have to be up tempo. You know, you can slow it down a little bit and you know, you're right. They, some of their best, their best possessions have been when they've taken their time. Christensen with it. Crossover to another crossover. She's got some good ball handling skills. Schlott passes up on the three. No good and the Wolverines Get a big rebound there. That's Allie Finch Cardwell. I like what the Wolverines did there. They had Devin Christensen coming off a couple of screens and they switched. I think it'll be important in the last you know few time, few moments here for the Wolverines to look to switch a lot of those screens. Great entry pass there to Jensen from Allie Finch Cardwell, and they've extended the lead back to nine. Now that ball went around the perimeter as you see a long three-point shot there from Devin Christensen. That's exactly what the Wolverines want because that was a four shot that wasn't needed. But, you know, the previous possession, the Wolverines just worked that ball around, got it into Sammy. Sammy with the left hand gets it to go. Back-to-back -back buckets for Sammy Jensen. And the Wolverines are going on a nice run here. They take a lead by 11. Christensen gets to the rim, and Utah State will take a timeout after the made bucket. 5.42 remaining here. We'll stay here. Let's go over a couple stats. That, that shooting percentage has rised for the Aggies, but it's still not at a place that you know allows you to be in, in the lead and go for wins. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I think you know the Aggies are, are struggling still shooting, but they are shooting a little bit better. Right. And that, that last possession right there shows it all. You know, it's that one-on-one -on -one perimeter defense and how well can they do defending it. You know, perhaps to me the most, the most, uh, you know, the best stat of the night for both teams is the Wolverines with 22 assists. You know, that's great. Uh, you love seeing that because they're sharing the basketball. They're being very unselfish. You know, they're shooting 50% from the field compared to 29% right now for the, uh, for the Aggies. Wolverine fans, we are not only on Facebook, we're also on Twitter. Come follow us at Utah Valley UNIV, where you can get updates to future events and news in less than 140 characters. That's where I get all my news. I love yeah. Twitter. You like the Twitter, huh? Yeah. I don't tweet that much, but it's, it's great for finding stuff out. It is. Finch Cardwell, Jenkins passes up the three. Doty swinging it. Double comes and a turnover. That's Schlott and gets it to go with the left hand. I thought that was a nice play there not to foul and turn that into a three-point play. Yeah, you gotta you gotta sometimes just let that go. You challenge it, but you don't foul. It's so again those the Aggies sometimes when the ball gets in the corner, they're trapping on that last possession, he gets on the perimeter and they're trapping. So at, at every point, Wolverines have to be ready for some type of a trap. Mansfield, nice layup there, good drive. They've done a nice job in this half of getting to the rim rather than settling for, you know, I, th I thought she had an open look there, but she passed it up for a better one. Well, and it's been, it's been penetration, and it's been dishing it off into the, the baseline at the short corner there on the baseline. Wolverines with a chance to get the lead into the double digits. Casey Mansfield, Finch Cardwell, Jenkins now with the basketball. They're here where they're going to pull it out a little bit. We'll take care of it, don't force anything. Jenkins, 
Jensen, excuse me, with a long bucket. That's huge for the Wolverines. Yeah, great ball fake there. She looked like she was going to pass it over. I believe it was to Whitney Jenkins. A great ball fake and nails the three-point shot. It looks like a little desperation is starting to, to set in with the Aggies. Every shot they take right now is a three-pointer. Yeah, and, you know, the Wolverines, great play there. Very nice play. You know, under normal circumstances, you don't want to see them force anything, use a little bit more clock. But she, you know, Casey Mansfield had a great opportunity there for a layup, and she's going to be going to the free throw. And I, I think you're right. You know, the Aggies are showing a little bit of desperation because they're shooting, you know, a lot of three-point shots. We'll see the replay here. Watch Casey Mansfield square up her shoulders. That was great. Square up her shoulders, go into the defender. And the defender didn't have a chance to, uh, to block the shot because Casey had squared up her shoulders properly. Mansfield with her 13th point of the game. She leads the way. Well, let me rephrase that. She's second in leading the way. Sammy Jensen has been unbelievable today, though, with 26 points and 13 boards. Yeah, she's been, she's been great. You know, last four minutes here, four minutes and 11 seconds. I think that the Aggies are going to ramp it up a little bit more. Wolverines do have a 14-point lead. Now you don't want to foul when you don't have to. Just play good, solid, uh, good, solid defense. Christensen gets the ball deflected. It looked like it might have been kicked, but no call. Hard to tell. Finch Cardwell and the Wolverines with a chance to extend that lead further. Heavy pressure by the Aggies. Mansfield, what a game. Stepping into the starting lineup for the first time this season. 14 points, nine boards. Jensen gets the foul. She'll go to the free throw line. All right, we'll take a timeout. The Wolverines have taken a new largest lead of the game by 14. See if they can hold on after this break. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. The Wolverines have extended their lead to 14 behind a sensational play from Sammy Jensen. Yeah, you see a nice play there on the replay, a, a nice just post up as the Wolverines work the clock down. Sammy with a nice duck in post up, took her time, didn't force anything, and went strong to the basket and is going to the free throw line. And she has a career high, 27 now, and that could potentially increase. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Her previous career high was 24 back in 2011. And also, another career high, Allie Finch Cardwell, nine assists. Done a great job from that three position, moving the ball around. Very nice. You know, great, uh, a great, great couple statistics there. Proud Sammy has a career high and a new, a new career high in assists as well. Long three, Christensen, no good. Has not been able to find the consistent touch from the three-point line. She's now two of eight. Yeah, tough night for her shooting the ball, and I, I think you give a lot of credit to def to the defenders. You know, seen a number of defenders on her. Whitney Jenkins, I know, has spent a lot of time. You know, there's been others as well. Uh, Cindy Gray has been on her, but, you know, nice job defensively. Let's pull this ball out for the Wolverines and run some time. That the, the clock is your friend in this situation. You don't want to force anything. Doty with the ball, pressured by Christensen. Having said that, it was a great, great open layup. Just wasn't able to, right. to get it to drop. You took your opportunity, pull it out, work the ball around a little, use some time. Jensen turns it over, and the Aggies running. No good. That was Elise Nelson pushing it. Casey Mansfield 
to Whitney Jenkins, 243. If they can take care of the basketball here and get a couple more quality possessions, yep. it looks good for them. It does. You know, there, there is that time when maybe four minutes left, four and a half, it's a 10, 12, 14 point lead where I think, you know, if I were a coach, I'd be worried because, you know, the opponent might put in that one last run here. Now, obviously still not over yet, but Wolverines have put themselves in a good position. Just take care of the basketball and don't turn it over and, and don't commit any silly fouls on the defensive end. Finch Cardwell, sensational night. Nine assists, career high as we mentioned. High low to Jensen. Hits the bucket and one. What a night for Sammy Jensen. She has now reached the 30 point mark in this game. Incredible. Well, that was just a great play. I mean, from the get go, you know, they knew that they, they were gonna use some clock. You see the high low pass there from Casey Mansfield. Just a perfect pass. I mean, you couldn't have put it any better. The defender was fronting, so you have to have help from the backside come over. You know, Sammy did a nice job of holding off the defender in the front and you know, just beautifully executed high-low basketball. 75-56, 19-point lead. The Wolverines have really put the pedal to the metal here in the late part of the second half. Ba'alulu, nice move there with the little hook shot. I'm surprised maybe we didn't see a little bit more of her as you're going to get an Aggie. You know, Aggie's putting on a full court press here. This is going to be something that will last the rest of the game. You know, good thing uh, different in the women's game, you get a timeout from Coach Nixon. Something that's nice, I think, uh, in the women's game is there's no backcourt. You know, there's no 10 second in the men's game. You, you have to get it over within uh, within 10 seconds. So in the women's game, you can you can use all the time, all, all the time you need, all the clock you need in the backcourt. So you know, I think Coach Nixon going to be going to be talking about what they're going to try and do, getting the ball inbounds off of the uh, you know against this press. Obviously, in this situation, running the time off is number one priority. If you have an open layup, do you take it anyways, yeah. or do you still pull back? You do. I mean, if you have an open shot, you, you, you want to take it. You just don't want to force anything. You know, it's uh, like in football when you see all these teams try and just run out the clock. That's exactly what the, the Wolverines are going to try and do. So, you know, don't turn it over. I always, I always think against a, a zone press, you got to keep it out of the corners. You want to try and get the ball in the middle of the floor, and you have to always be aware of defenders swiping from every direction, from every angle, and traps. You know, they're going to be swiping and trapping. They get the ball in, and they've got number. Oh, intercepted by Ba'alulu. Great play there. Christensen will pass it off to Johnson on the other side of the court. No good on the three. Rebounded by Doty. Strong rebound. And then a jump ball situation. The arrow is pointing towards the Wolverines. So they should keep possession. No jump balls. Yeah, that was a good job of uh, initially breaking the press. Coach Nixon going to call another timeout. They did a nice job of initially breaking the press. And then they but got. Once, yeah, once again, just that, you know, that diagonal pass. I guess I should add to my list of swiping and trapping. I think you know, <laughs> jumping in the passing lanes. That's what that's what uh, the Aggies have done all night long. Wolverines have 21 turnovers tonight. That's uh, that's more than they had against Boise State. Significantly more, but the shooting percentage has been good, and they've rebounded well. I think a lot of those turnovers have come from those cross-court passes. Yeah. Yeah, I think a, a lot of it has just been, you know, you can call it lazy passes because sometimes that's what they seem to be. Um, but, you know, I think what has really, I mean, this to me, uh, when you look at it, we're going to see the final statistics, but Utah State has taken 77 shots. I mean, that's unheard of if you ask me. Right. It, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a good number in the NBA sometimes, you know, but 77 shots for the Aggies. They've made only 22, and they're 4 of 27 from the three-point line. So I think that's been, more than anything, that's been their downfall. Um, and, you know, give credit, a lot of credit to the Wolverines. Foul there by the Wolverines. And that was Elise Nelson who committed the foul, and that will send Casey Mansfield back to the free throw line. Lost in the amazing performance of Sammy Jensen, and we've talked about it, but I want to highlight again is the great performance by Casey Mansfield, who starts her first game of the year and steps in and has 14 points, 10 rebounds, double-double. Yeah, I mean, incredible. You know, two, two great efforts individually. 
Uh, obviously fit well, mixed well into the team effort that was given. And we mentioned it at half. I think, you know, everybody's contributed. Y you can look at everybody who played and say that they, you know, for the Wolverines, they, they did something and it did a lot of those things to, uh, to aid their team. No good on the three-point arena by Doty. She's done a nice job off the bench of providing great defense and solid rebounding from that guard position. Yeah, and she's a good ball handler too. You know, she can, she can handle the ball. She does a nice job of that. I, I think the Wolverines have a lot of good ball handlers on the perimeter. You know, they've got Whitney, Whitney Jenkins that can handle the ball. They've got Taylor Huber, obviously Sidney Gray. And we haven't even, I haven't even mentioned Allie Cardwell who has all those assists. And even Sammy Jensen, I think, is uh, you know an above-average ball handler for a four, for a power forward or a center. Yeah, and I think that she makes. We mentioned that she makes those great decisions. You know, she does. She's she's a player who, who makes a lot of the right decisions a lot of times and doesn't really force anything when it's not there. So that's been uh, that's been pretty impressive uh, to watch tonight. One thirteen remaining. Wolverines lead by twenty one. And that's Whitney Jenkins at the free throw line. Nine points, looking for a tenth. No good. Rebounded by Jensen. Continues to pad those stats on a career night. And she was instrumental at that period where the Aggies had cut it to four, and then she just yeah. found ways to get buckets, extended to six, eight. Yeah, she did. And, and I think on both ends, you know, it just wasn't on one end. It wasn't offensively. She had a couple of really nice possessions and, and uh, affected the game defensively. Anytime you, you know that you're going to have somebody down there who can rebound, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible. 14 rebounds for Jensen, and Whitney Jenkins drew the foul out on the perimeter, and she'll be back at the free throw line. So three Wolverines are in double figure scoring today as Jenkins makes the free throw. You, know, you look at the oh. Wolverines with 41 defensive rebounds. You know, they've, they've, put, uh, they've put a lot of effort in on the defensive glass, too. And they've, been, I, they've done a much better job in the second half of limiting those second chance opportunities. Yes, I agree. It was, it was, uh, they did a much better job in the second half than what they did in the first half. I agree with you there because you know, that, was, uh, that was something that the Wolverines really needed help with in the first half. 78 to 58. High scoring game for the Wolverines, considering that last year when these two teams played, they only had 45 points. So they've not quite doubled the score, but their offensive output was much more impressive this year than last year up at Utah State. Under a minute remaining here. I think it's safe to say that the Wolverines are gonna get a big in-state win over Utah State. Preseason polls don't mean much, but it's got to feel good to beat a team picked to finish first in the yeah, conference. Yeah, absolutely, and, and especially, you know, not, not a huge deal about this, but the, the Aggies, or excuse me, the, the Wolverines, as we, as we talked about, are going to the WAC. So you're right. I mean, it is it is a, a great win for the, for the school. It's a great win for the future because you can look at it and say they can play with anybody, you know, not only in the Great West Conference, but in the conference that they're going to be going to. Wolverines can dribble it out. Looks like the final score will be the Wolverines 78 and the Aggie 62. Tremendous win for the Wolverines. Their offensive output today was very impressive, shooting 51%, scoring 78 points. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with the player of the game, Sammy Jensen, who had a career night, and we'll also talk with head coach, Coach Dixon. We'll take a break, be back shortly. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. Hi, 
I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. The Wolverines defeat the Aggies 78 to 62, and we're sitting here with the player of the game, Sammy Jensen, a career game for you, 31 points to go along with 14 rebounds. Talk about your performance and the team's performance. I mean, career game for you, obviously. Yeah. There was a point there in the second half where the Aggies kind of got it really close and got it within four. What did Coach tell you guys when it was close and then he extended that lead? Um, you know, we just have to keep going. Like, every game's going to have lapses. We just have to get over those lapses pretty quick and just keep pushing as hard as we can. How important was it for the team to get this win after the loss Friday night against Boise State? Um, it was really important. We knew that we could have had Boise State. We just had to make those lapses a little smaller, and tonight I think we did a really good job of that. Yeah, a great job. I mean, last year the, the Aggies, you know, won the game. And this year, you turn around and beat them pretty convincingly. What does this win do for the team? Um, I think it just gives us a lot of confidence in our team. Uh, we're a really good team. Last game, we didn't shoot very well. So this, I think, just pushes us forward into the season. What do you think the team did well tonight that you can use to build upon? Um, just like hard work and teamwork, just sticking together, just doing the small things on defense, I think helped a lot, talking. I think it just flows and definitely fuels the offense. How much confidence can you gain from this? A lot. You gain a lot of confidence by playing well together and just basically just having fun with your teammates. All right, uh, Sammy Jensen, 31 points, 14 rebounds, career highs for you. Thanks for stopping in for the halftime show. Yeah, thank have you. a great season and a great day. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back after this on UVU TV. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Having an amazing experience at college isn't just found in the classroom. It's just as important to have a great experience away from the books. At Wolverine Crossing, we totally understand that. Take a look around. We offer an experience that helps you gain the most of what it means to learn and grow. Plus, you won't find better amenities anywhere else. If you're looking for student housing that will enhance your college experience, look no further. Wolverine Crossing. Student living redefined. Conveniently located just across the freeway from UVU.
Welcome back to the post-game show here on UVU TV, where the Wolverines have just defeated the Aggies 78-62. What do you like about your team's performance tonight? Well, I felt like we had a really good team effort on the defensive end. You know, Utah State's a good team. You know, they're preseason uh, conference favorites, and we knew that we had our, our work cut out for us. But, you know, I was really pleased with the way the kids came out, just physical from the beginning. They executed the game plan really well, and I thought they we stayed aggressive on both ends of the floor, and I, th I think that kind of got us a, a little bit of a rhythm and some confidence, and then we were able to just finish it at the end. Sammy Jensen had a unbelievable night tonight she was awesome career high scoring with 31 and 14 what what do you like about her performance well you know sammy's been just money since she got here and boy she was awesome tonight she just you know really if we could get her the ball she was pretty much uh, unstoppable but um and she missed a few free throws she would have right. might she might have 40 if we'd have made a few free throws but i just love that kid she competes she loves the game of basketball and uh you know what a joy to have her on our team she's just multifaceted and talented and just a great kid so it's fun to see her be successful at one point there in the second half the aggies cut the lead down to four what did you tell your team before they went on that big run to really push the game open well we talked about at halftime we knew that they would make a push you know they're they have a lot of scoring power they have a bunch of kids that can shoot the ball and uh, we knew that they would make a run at us so you know i, th I think the kids felt like that's okay you know they kind of made their run and we were able to to match that with some scores and got a couple stops and so you know i just felt like our overall balance was was something that gave the kids some confidence and uh you know it, it just Although they had 13 offensive rebounds in the first half, they only had three in the second. I yeah, thought that tremendous. was key. You know, we were really, really good on the on the board. Sammy with 14, Casey was awesome. Just a very good collective effort. And we were able to bring some kids off the bench to, that contributed. I thought Tina had a really nice game. Um, so you know, it's just it's fun to see the kids play well. They work really hard, and to see them be rewarded like that is is really fun. You mentioned the Aggies were preseason picked to win the WAC. How much confidence can your team gain from a win like this? Oh, I think it, it definitely builds confidence. I think any time that you you know you you know you face a formidable opponent and you make a stand and are successful, it's something we'll need going on the road. You know, we have have three games on the road against good teams, and I think I think it will give us confidence. You know, to beat a team like Utah State, I think our girls uh, can can hold that on, hold on to that, and know that you know there's going to be other teams come along, and when they get into tight situations, they can feel confident that we can pull it out. Probably getting tired of the whack questions, but after beating a, a really good whack team like this, does that help you going into the future feel confident and comfortable about going into the whack? Yeah, you know, it's something that we've been looking forward to. Um, and really, honestly, right now we're focused on the Great West. You know, it's important for us to build our preseason so that we can be successful in our, our conference play this year. And uh, all those building blocks, you know, will contribute for the future. But we're very focused on being, uh, you know, conference champions and, and looking forward to the tournament. That will be difficult. You know, you don't march through a season and uh, win championships easily. And we know that. But I think this is something we can celebrate tonight and, and we'll uh, get preparing for our road trips tomorrow. Last question. Uh, what do you want the team to improve on going forward from tonight? Well, you know, we turned it over uh, way too many times. Uh, that about, you know, knocked me out, gave me a heart attack. <laughs> but uh, I thought we kind of made it difficult on ourselves. You know, came out the, the beginning of the second half, and we basically negated our whole first half, just giving them, you know, giving the ball, and they go down to score. But the way we responded, I was really impressed with. And, you know, you can't expect a team to play perfectly, but when they make mistakes, ask them to bounce back. And I thought we did that really well tonight. Thank you, Coach. Nixon, the Wolverines win 78-62. to We'll be back after this break. Thanks, Matt. Okay, that was Coach Nixon with some great comments. And the Wolverines are victorious. Let's get back in for some stats. Here's some uh, final stats here. And uh, the thing that really jumped out, as you mentioned earlier, and we'll start there, is the assists for the Wolverines. Yeah, 24 assists. And, you know, watching that game, it was a lot of fun to watch because it wasn't a lot of one on one basketball. It was a lot of you know one-on-one -on -one basketball at times, but then by doing so, creating opportunities for your teammates. You know, 48 rebounds, as we mentioned. They did have 21 turnovers. It didn't play a biggest factor as I thought it was going to. You look at the Aggies with 12 assists, 43 rebounds. They had a lot of offensive rebounds and uh, 15 turnovers. So great individual effort. I'm, I didn't listen, didn't hear what Coach Nixon had to say, but I'm sure she was very pleased. And, you know, what a night for Sammy. You know, what, a, what an unbelievable for performance. She led the Wolverines and, you know, lifted everybody else in the process. 
Yeah, she mentioned that they only gave up three offensive rebounds in that second half, and yeah. that was a huge turning point. Yeah, I think so. You know, it was night and day from the first half when they got three offensive rebounds, I swear, on a couple different possessions. So uh, a great win for the Wolverines, very exciting over an in-state rival, and uh, I'm proud of the Wolverines. They came out and they played with a lot of fire and a lot of intensity, and they deserved to win that game, and they did. Not only were they able to break a uh, six-year losing streak to the Aggies, but they did it in such a uh, – tremendous fashion that yep. you have to think that they're going to take this confidence and continue to play well. Yep. Yeah, long season, but this is a great start to that season. The Wolverines beat the Aggies in an in-state rivalry 78-62. to uh, Matt Baiamani alongside Matt Peterson. Thanks for watching tonight on UVU-TV.